Hello everyone, welcome to Suvi classes. My name is Pragati and today I'm going to start a new topic. Uh, today uh, we are going to start our new session, second session. And in this uh, session, we will going to cover up the two topics. First topic is fiber, fibers and fabric. That is chapter number three of your NCRT book. And the next topic is heat. That is chapter number four of your NCRT book. So these two topic we will go and we will revise the, these chapters um, so that it will be clear it, your concept will clear okay so let's start So here you can see our session two, that is fibers to fabric, chapter number three. Uh, in this, uh, you can see a wool. Wool, you all know, uh, this is a sheep. Sheep is very famous for the wool. And these are the animals that is uh, responsible for giving us the fibers. So first of all, what do you mean by fibers, students? So fibers are material which is available in the form of a material which is available in the form of thin and continuous strand is called fiber. Your material which is that is your material is very thin material and continuous strand okay there will be thin and continuous strand is there that is called the fiber okay and these fibers are of two main type two main type on the basis of how they obtain so first type is natural fiber second is man-made fiber or synthetic fiber. natural fiber is the fibers that is obtained from nature that is plant okay and uh, as the second one is man-made fibers or synthetic that is made by men. That human beings uh, made those fibers according to their need, right? And natural fibers which we um, collect from nature, okay? So second is importance of clothes. Why these fibers are important to us? Because with these fibers, we make some clothes, right? And why clothes are important to us? Because as they protect from heat, they protect from heat, they protect from cold, they, they, uh, clothes look nice and decent. We cover our body that, uh, that uh, gives protection from the heat, uh, from the cold, from the fires, and it looks nice and decent on us, okay? So, so our ne next topic is fibers, you see? The fiber that is a natural, that is a thin, we have read, thin and continuous. Okay, and it is of two types, uh, types uh, on the basis of how they uh, are made. If they are obtained from nature, that is a natural fiber. If they are made by human beings, uh, we obtained it from human beings, it is man. Okay, so. Um, natural fibers is that is plant fiber and animal fiber which uh, the fibers we obtain from nature and in nature two main uh, things are there that is a plant fiber and animal fiber so either we obtain fibers from the plants or from the animals just now we have uh, i have shown you the picture of that uh, that seed and seed gives you fiber okay Next is man-made is organic and inorganic. So in man-made, what happened? They uh, prepared in the labs. They prepared fibers in the labs. And there are two methods. That is from the organic compounds and from the inorganic compounds. So these are the. So in this way, we uh, obtained fibers, OK? Now, now we'll move to our next slide. Yeah. 
Yes. So next slide is. Yeah, so we have discussed that fibers can be obtained from nature. That uh, particular fiber is known as natural fiber. And if the fibers obtained from uh, uh, man made synthetic, it will be called man made or synthetic fiber. Natural fiber, how we obtain. Uh, either by plants, that will be called as plant fiber. If we'll obtain from animals, it will be called as animal fiber. And man-made, uh, that fibers are uh, prepared by human beings in the labs by two methods that can be organic and inorganic, okay? So now, these are the examples you can see. Fabric, natural fabric, and synthetic fabric. First, uh, natural fabric is your cotton, can be your cotton, silk, wool, jute, linen, cord. These are your natural fiber that is obtained from the plants, either plants or animals. Okay. So silk is obtained from the sea. I have already told you. Okay. Now, cotton, cotton is cotton plant you might have seen somewhere. Okay, in the same way, there's a synthetic fiber that is rayon, polyester, decron, nylon, spandex, acrylic. These are the synthetic fiber that is made up of, made by human beings in the labs. These can be organic and inorganic. Now, next slide. The, this is your chapter. That is you uh, the chapter start from this that fibers to fabric, and here it is uh, shown that is uh, fibers are obtained from animals. Wool is obtained from the feces that is hair of the sheep or yolk. Silk fibers came from the cocoons which uh, cocoons of the silk moth okay so uh, the wool that is obtained from the sheep or yolk and silk fibers came from which cocoon of the silk moth okay and and next is your that is yeah so uh, this is your some animal fibers Animal fibers are obtained from these animals, can be obtained. Your yolk, uh, yolk you have seen. If you've gone to a Sikkim area and in Nepal, uh, that uh, in the Himalayas region, this yolk is, uh, you will, uh, can find yolk there. Then is uh, camel, camel also provides some kind of wool. Then sheep, then goat. This is a different kind of code that is that will be available and in the Himalayas region, Himalayan region, and this particular type of code you cannot see at your place like we and we are here in the plain region. And these uh, gold give you the silk and very fine material. Have you ever heard about the pashmina? The pashmina silk is uh, very famous in the Kashmir region. Okay. So these pashmina um, silk obtained from the goat. It is a myth that it will be. It is obtained from the sheep, but pashmina is obtained from the goat. And this particular of goat, you you never have seen such type of goat. Goat is generally we have seen um, uh, in our region, and this goat is very much different. Okay. Now, yeah. Now let uh, let's move to this. Yeah, the correct sequence is how these uh, fibers obtain from the animals, how we obtain. So first is your, that is shearing, then sockering, then sorting, then picking out the burrs, 
then dyeing in various colors these are the steps that is followed by human beings in order to obtain the fibers from 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 nature okay uh it, the, from nature the uh, fibers can be obtained by two methods i have told you that is a plants and your plants and animals so animals uh, there are some sort of uh, sequence that is uh, done by the human beings in order to obtain the silk okay so one by one we will do the sharing uh, before that i will uh, just we will revise what we have read till now so first of all uh, i'll tell you that fibers i have the fibers are the natural uh, the fibers are continuous and thin material okay that continuous and thin material continuous and thin material that is uh, uh, that is very important for us in making fibers and that fibers we are used in making our clothes so why clothes are important to us clothes are very important in the point of view that uh, that these uh, clothes protect us from the summer from the hot from the cold and as well as it look it gives us a decent and very good look. we look nice after wearing the clothes so for these purpose we um, the clothes are made and these clothes are made by fibers some sort of you have just now you have wear some t-shirt or kind of thing so that t-shirt is made up of some fibers and that fiber can be your natural or man made so natural fiber that is from the nature and man made that human beings uh, made in the labs okay so natural fibers is of two uh, it's of two type that is if it is obtained from the plants it is a plant fiber and if it is obtained from the animals it will be animal fiber okay on the next if uh, a human uh, that is a synthetic fibers can also be of two type it is prepared in the labs if it is prepared from the organic it is prepared from organic compounds organically organic reagents are used then it is called organic synthetic fiber and if it is used from the inorganic compounds and organic reagents it is called the inorganic um, synthetic fibers okay i have shown you some uh, some kind of uh, that so there are many animals uh, there are many uh, kind of animals that is responsible for rearing of sheep right so see uh, i'll explain with the help of your textbook uh, so i have told you all these things then we'll move to the wool animal fiber wool and silk the wool and silk are the main animal fiber so uh, this wool comes from the sheep the uh, it can be either sheep will give you the wool or the goat okay and some other animals these wood yielding animals bear hair on their body okay. you can see this picture uh, this animal uh, this is a sheep and uh, there's a very heavy hair thick hair uh, is uh, all over the body and and hair trap is a lot of air air is a poor conductor of heat okay these animals is a thick coat of hair why because hair trap a lot of air okay um, these animals you are basically found in the himalayan region in which uh, the season is very cold okay so what happened these hairs these hairs protect them from the cold how they protect the the air the very cold air got trapped in the these hair and air is a poor conductor of heat okay as you would uh, learn okay so hair keeps these animals warm wool is derived from these hairy fibers so this hairy these hairs are taken away from these animals and wool wool are made from these hairs of the animal you can see this angara goat this kind of goat this camel these are all responsible for giving us the uh, fibers okay now fiber 
I have told you that there are many steps. Just see here. We are about to study uh, these sequence, sharing, squatting. These sequence I'll tell you here. First step is your See, these are the animals that is responsible for giving us the giving us the fibers we uh, obtain fibers from these animals. Like uh, we have read about the sheep, okay. Yeah, so first step is shearing. What is shearing? The fleece of the sheep along with the thin layer of his skin is removed from the body. This process is called the shearing. What it, the, the hair, the whole body of the sheep is covered with the heavy hair. So what is the first step? That the fleece of the sheep along with the thin layer of skin is removed from the body. That particular layer of skin is removed from his body, and this particular process is known as shearing. Okay, machines similar to those used by the barbers are used to shave off hairs. So, first step is um, in very easy language. The first step is that all the hairs, all the hairs in the body, is just cut and removed from the body, just like the barbers cut your hair. Okay, just like that, there are very heavy machines that is respond that is used for the removing of the hairs all around the body of the sheep. Okay, this process is called the shearing. Okay, now let's move to the next process. Now, there are some terms which is important in this chapter. These are the terms of the rearing and breeding of sea. What does it mean? Uh, see, these kind of sheep are we obtained in the region that is Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Uttaranchal Plains of Haryana, Punjab, Rajasthan. Okay, so these are the area which uh, where you can find out these animals. The uh, from which we obtain the silk and wools. Sheep are reared in many parts of our country of the wool gives the country for the production of wool. The rearing of wool. The rearing of wool means that rearing means that we take by it is a process of taking that removing from obtaining fibers or wool from the sheep. It is called the rearing. And the very step, very first step of the rearing process is shearing. That is the all the hair that is covered, uh, covered, uh, covered over the body. It is removed by the heavy machines. Uh, that is called the shearing. Okay. After that, these hairs, these hairs are responsible for uh, further. We make uh, fibers from these hairs. Okay. So um, let's. I'll show you the, the now scoring, shorting, picking out the burrs and dyeing in various color. Then after that, it is shorted out, which uh, if uh, some hair is uh, uh, not in the correct sequence, we will put it in the correct sequence. If some hair is, uh, uh, you know, some hair is not good, we will remove that hairs and we'll collect all the good hairs and we will um, uh, what they do they make the fibers from this 
and after uh, the fiber is obtained, the whole wool is obtained, it is going to dyeing in various colors. Okay, if you want red color, it is going to dye with the red color. If you want the pink color, it will dye more with the pink color. So you you see the wool. That wool is of different color. So it, that color is not obtained from the sheep. After the several process, that uh, various colors. These are the dyeing by various colors. Okay. Now silk, silk fibers are also animal fibers. Silk worms spin the silk fiber. The rearing of silk worms are obtained. Obtaining silk is called the sericulture. The sericulture is a very important term. Sericulture is a is the process that is sericulture is a rearing of silk worms for obtaining silk. Okay. If you want to obtain a silk, you have to rear the silk worms. And I have told you the moth, the larva, the moth, from which the silk is obtained. And this whole process is known as the sericulture. You can see these moth. Life history of the silk moth. This is male, male silk, uh, silk moth, and this is a female. And this is an egg on mulberry leaves this is a silk worm and we obtain silk from the cocoon cocoon with developing moth and in this stage we obtain the we will uh, re rear the silk okay so you can see a female silk moth lays hundreds of eggs at a time the eggs are stored carefully on the strips of the clothes or the paper and so sold to silk worm farmers. Okay, when silk moth, female silk moth, hundreds of egg they lay, uh, they lay hundreds more than hundreds of egg. Okay, at one time. So these eggs are stored and covered up with the clothes, and they send it to the silk worm farmers who are in this business of farming. Okay. Yeah, farmers. Then what happens? Farmers keep uh, eggs under the hygienic condition and under the suitable condition. Under the suitable condition and uh, the proper temperature and humidity is provided to that uh, cocoons because if the cocoons will... Uh, the cocoons these cocoons are very important uh, as they will grow and from these cocoons we, uh, farmers obtain the fibers the eggs are warmed to a suitable temperature for the larva to hatch from the eggs this is done when mulberry trees bears a fresh crop of leaves the larva called caterpillars or silk worms okay eat day and night and increase enormously in size so these cocoons are very very well preserved and taken care and nourishment everything so that the silk can easily obtain from these silk these cocoons and this whole process known as sericulture okay the process of rearing of silk from the silk worm is known as sericulture process okay so we have done here uh, we have read about the wool the silk this is a important part of this chapter 
and uh, natural fibers, man-made fibers, examples of natural fibers and man-made fibers. And all. So I have a one quiz for you and you will attend this quiz to see that uh, you got the concept just now we have talked or not. So I'm sharing the uh, quiz in a chat section area. Go and attend that quiz. It uh, the quiz has both the questions like uh, the questions of short uh, questions, para question, and MCQs. So this is a quiz. Uh, you have to attend the quiz to see. Uh, you got the full chapter. You got the concepts which we have just now discussed. Now we'll move to the next topic that is heat. Uh, that is chapter number four of your NCRT. We'll move to that chapter. This is your heat. Heat is a form of energy flowing from one body of matter to another spontaneously due to their temperature difference. Okay. You have uh, just, uh, you all have seen the heat when it is a, now summer has came. So it is very hot all around. So what is the heat? What do you mean by heat? Heat is a form of energy. Heat is actually a energy. What it is, it is an energy flowing from one body material matter to another okay it is a form of energy and, and that moves from one body to another okay spontaneously due to their temperature difference obviously if there there is a temperature difference between two bodies the heat will flow why they will flow the why this uh, heat will flow because it is a form of energy so suppose you have a one two bodies and one is hot and one body is cold what will happen the uh, there will be heat transfer from the hotter reason to colder reason why because there's a temperature difference between if these two bodies are at the same temperature there will be no heat transfer takes place because heat is a it will transfer only in that condition when there is a temperature difference. Okay. Suppose uh, you uh, just boil a cup of water. After some times, what will happen? That water will, boiled water will cool down. Why it cools down? Because some heat, heat inside that water is flows to the surrounding you have this uh, in the container there's a water and it is a hot water after some time this hot water cold because the heat from these this water will be moved to surrounding why surrounding because the temperature of surrounding and the temperature of this container is at the different level so in order to maintain a balance the heat from this container will transfer to the surrounding and when the heat will transfer to the surrounding the temperature will be normal and the hot water that boiled water will become cool down fine so characteristics of heat heat always transfer from uh, from body of higher temperature to a body of lower temperature or heat flows spontaneously from a hotter body to a cooler body so it is a characteristic of a heat that heat will always transfer from a hotter body to colder body, hotter body to colder body, always, okay. And then I'll show you some, yeah. Read out from the book. Hot and cold. Uh, I've told you the characteristics of the hot 
there is one activity uh, here take three small tubes container label them a b c put cold water in mug a hot water in mug b mix up and see the results and mix some cold and hot water in mug c now dip your hand left hand in the mug a and the right hand in the mug b after keeping the hands in two mugs for 2 to 3 minutes put both the hands simultaneously your hands get some feel so you have uh, the you have three containers one containers having the cold water one container having the hot water what happen if hot water and cold water and one water having mix the hot and cold water is so put the uh, your uh, left hand in the cold water right, uh, right hand in the hot water what you will see and after that remove the hands hmm? and just uh, dip the both hands in the water that uh, contain the mixture of hot and cold water what you will observe and remove the hand and just join your hand what will happen the heat will transfer from the uh, hand you have dipped in the hotter water to the hand that was dipped in the colder water so it this activity shows you can perform this activity at your home but be careful the hot water should not be very hot okay just be careful the hot water is that much hot that your uh, hand can be hot, okay so you can perform this activity it's a very small activity it shows that heat will always transfer from the hotter body to the colder body okay always and heat will only transfer when there is a temperature difference between the body okay so uh, this is all i have told now how you measure the temperature what is temperature reliable temperature a reliable measure of the hotness of the object is temperature temperature is me measured by the device called thermometer okay so uh, the hotness of the body hotness of the body that a particular hotness like how much a particular body is particular body or whatever it is hot that is measured by a that is called the temperature of the body okay it is a quantity that will uh, tell you that a body is how much hot so there is a device that measures the temperature of particular body uh, this is called the thermometer okay and thermometer is of two types what is thermometer it measures temperature of any object or body okay and it is of two types we will talk about the types it is of two types that is clinical clinical thermometer wait a sec yeah so it is of two types that is one clinical thermometer and another one is the laboratory so in clinical we use clinical thermometer at your home which type of thermometer you use at your home that is clinical thermometer this is your clinical thermometer so uh, this uh, okay 
this thermometer you can see and the temperature is given you in the degree celsius okay and these these are the readings thermometer bulb and this is called the glass bulb containing mercury okay mercury mercury thread is there you have uh, might have seen the thermometer at your home while measuring your fever if you have a fever the thermometer can measure how much temperature is of your body so normal body temperature is we we'll talk about the normal body temperature normal body temperature is 37 degrees celsius and in kelvin it is 97 so if uh, if the uh, your temperature increases like it if we'll take in the kelvin 97 kelvin to where was that yeah so in 37 degrees celsius and 97 for in a height wait a sec yeah so it increases from up to like 100 or 101 102 102 okay so in corona also in pandemic uh, if you got fever it was measured by a thermometer okay 104 uh, above 100 degree it is very dangerous so this uh, thermometer is very helpful in measuring the hotness of your body that is uh, how much is uh, your body hot hotter than the normal body temperature or not if it is a hotter than the normal body temperature it means you have a fever okay and a laboratory thermometer is basically used in the labs for me uh, for uh, obtaining the temperature of the compounds the organic and inorganic compounds in the labs so it is very big in, bigger in size okay uh, your uh, clinical thermometer is very small in size that laboratory thermometer is very big in size okay and it is uh, uh, used for the labs area for the measuring temperature of the uh, organic and inorganic compounds and everything and this clinical clinical thermometers used at your homes for uh, measuring your body temperature and other temperature so nowadays digital thermometer has also came uh, we generally use digital thermometer digital thermometer doctors also use nowadays digital thermometer So we were talking about the clinical thermometer. So I've told you everything. So uh -huh, there's a, a one thing that uh, how to use that thermometer. Okay. So thermometer should be washed before and after the use. Antiseptic solutions you have to use to wash it because uh, your infection and in some if, if your you have used uh, on your body that thermometer and uh, somebody will else will use that the infection from your body can be transferred so ensure that you must wash the thermometer before use and after use and preferable antiseptic solutions ensure that before use the mercury level is below 35 degrees celsius so if we are not using that uh, digital one so make sure that uh, the mercury level is, should be below 35 degrees celsius so that it will give you the accurate temperature read the thermometer keeping the level of mercury along the line of sight okay it is uh, very important to read the uh, careful reading of the thermometer otherwise it will uh, you will get the wrong information wrong temperature handle the temperature with care if it hits again some hard object it can be bright so these are the important points uh, why i have told you uh, so that uh, you should be uh, while using it at your home just keep these points in mind okay not for only the your study purpose also at your home 
you you should aware of these points okay the normal temperature of human body is 37 37 degree celsius note the temperature stated so and uh, the you can measure the temperature in 3 degrees uh, that is uh, in three scales that is degree celsius one is fahrenheit and other is kelvin so we means um, we uh, generally use the celsius and fahrenheit and uh, i have told you the in degree celsius your normal body temperature is 37 degree celsius okay now laboratory thermometer you, you can see this yellow color thermometer in the picture it is very big in size this kind of thermometer is used in the labs okay so different types of thermometers are used for different purpose the maximum and minimum temperature of the previous day reported in weather reports are measured by the thermometer called the maximum minimum thermometers so i have told you the main two types that is clinical and thermal clinical and laboratory thermometer there is one another type that is maximum maximum and minimum uh, thermometer that is you that is uh, used in obtaining the weather reports like uh, in your newspaper you generally see na that today uh, today's temperature is this and yesterday's temperature was that and today is more hotter than uh, yesterday so these are the measured by the maximum and minimum thermometer Hmm. So uh, suppose you have one container of you have one container. You have particular one container, and there is a water or something whatever you have kept there. Suppose it is a hot water, and uh, you have to check the temperature of this hot water. Which type of thermometer you are going to use? Just tell me which type of thermometer you are going to use for measuring the hotness of the water. We will use the laboratory thermometer. Okay, you are not going to use. It will be laboratory thermometer. You are not going to use clinical one. Only laboratory thermometer. So. so i have told you the laboratory thermometers are used for measuring the temperature of the this any compound any objects and there's a one process also this yeah there's a one uh, there's a three process that is conduction convec convection and radiation what does it all means yeah now the topic comes the transfer of heat how heat generally transfer what is the medium of transferring of heat okay so heat can be transferred by many ways the process by which heat is transferred from the hotter end to the colder end of an object is known as conduction in solids generally heat is transferred the process of conduction in solids if heat is transferred from the one body to another it is called the conduction the a uh, very good example uh, you can see of this conduction in your kitchen okay so uh if you going to uh, if you going to uh, just heat one uh, one portion of any particular body suppose you have your um, spoon okay you have your spoon and just heat one that one part one side of the spoon heat it after some time the heat will move to another end heat will transfer to another end how does it takes took place by the transfer of heat and this process called the conduction
conduction transfer of heat in solid suppose you have one large stick of steel that is your spoon suppose this is spoon so you have given the heat to this end what you will see after some time this end also becomes hot because heat will transfer from this end to this end and this particular process known as conduction conduction always takes place in the solid okay now what are the conductors conductors are the materials that allows the heat the transfer of heat they allows the transfer of heat from them easily are called the conductors for example your aluminium your iron your copper these but your steel i have just talk, uh, just now talked about the steel these are the conductors conductors allow the heat transfer in them very easy okay and there are uh, conductors are categorized into two group that is uh, categorized into two groups one are good conductor and second one is bad conductor good conductor that is they transfer the heat very good and bad conductor that they transfer a very little amount of heat or negligible so they also included in the insulators what is the insulators that do not allow the heat transfer from themselves are called insulator for example the insulator examples can be your wood stone okay and conductors examples are iron aluminium steel copper you have seen the copper wire at your home so the, these coppers are the good conductors and the insulator that do not allow the heat transfer from themselves these are called the insulators or bad conductor okay i have just told you now the convection process ah uh, the process uh, continues till the whole water gets heated the mode of the heat transfer okay. so uh, what are the convection that uh, it do not takes place in the solids convection takes place in the air can also like uh, just uh, you put your hand above the candle you uh, after sometimes you uh, you feel very hot and you okay so that transfer of heat that, there is a which medium was uh, in between your the candle and and your hand is air the so air is the medium uh, the heat has transferred from the candle to your hand with the help of air the uh, with the medium air and that air uh, this process called the convection okay and by the sea breeze and land breeze uh, this is the only reason of the convention by which the day time and hot time see land breeze and sea breeze what happened to these in day time in day time what happened the hot wait a second the warm air from the land moves toward the sea to complete the cycle the uh, i will read from this here the people living in the coastal areas experience an interesting phenomena during the day the land gets heated heated faster than the water so during day time the land heated the faster water than water the air over the land becomes hotter and rises up the cooler air from the sea rushes it towards the land to take its place the warm air from the land moves towards the sea to complete the cycle okay 
so uh, this is called the sea breeze in sea breeze what happens the um, the land heats up faster than water so what happened uh, the air over the land the air above the land becomes hotter and rise up and what it it will do i have told you there is a heat transfer and heat transfer will take place uh, with which mode that is convection okay so so hotter air hotter air above the land will transfer to the to which reason to colder reason because heat always transfer from hotter to colder reason okay so it will uh, transfer to colder reason that is to the sea sea side okay the warmer air from the land and the warmer air from the land moves toward the sea okay and the cooler air from the uh, sea goes towards the land and this cycle goes on this is called the sea breeze in the same way this just opposite takes place in the land breeze in coastal areas are made to face the sea at night it is exactly reverse at the uh diet the this process reverse okay the water cools down more slowly than the land so the cooler air from the land moves toward the sea this is called the land bridge now there is a one process left that is a radiation so radiation is that do not need any medium the transfer of heat by radiation does not require any medium it takes place whether the medium is present or not it do not depends on the radiation it transfer the heat from the surrounding by the radiation there is a radiation like sun sun the sun's heat and light is transferred to um, that on earth okay so this is called the radiation and uh, there is a one radiation in sun present that is uv radiation so if there is a no medium at all and when there is a no medium the transfer of heat takes place that is called the radiation when the medium is air the transfer of heat is called convection and when the medium is solid some solid object then the process is called the conduction okay so here we have finished the both a chapter i will share you one quiz wait a second so you have you might have solved the quiz for the fiber fibers and fabric chapter now there is a small quiz of heat and uh, heat chapter also and just to, after the lecture just go and revise the both the topics if there is any difficulty at any place you can ask in the next class and uh, after that uh, in uh, next session we will meet with new topic and new and fresh topic and these sessions are for your revision so make sure you attend the class daily so that uh, your revision will takes place and also the chapters you have already read you, the concept will be more clear so that's it for today thank you class good night